Hi folks, I'm Nathan with Two Guys in a Ride, and welcome to our Car Tech how-to video on the 2023 Honda Accord, and this is the Sport Hybrid trim level. Today, I'll be covering the driver's information and infotainment screens. I'll do a general overview, show you how to access information, and do a deep dive. Let's get started. Today, we're working with our friends at Luther Mankato Honda in Mankato, Minnesota. So the driver's information screen here is a 10 point two inch screen it is all digital um, and to control the information in here you're going to use this rotary knob and that's it so basically as it's set up you've got you know percentage of power used over on the far left you've got your miles per hour on the far right and then you've got a uh, the far left at the bottom you've got a charging indicator the next portion on the left side is the customizable area. You can see me kind of scrolling through the different things you can do. And um, then it will display like you see. Now in the center portion, you've got your, sort of your driver safety features along with your cruise control and so forth. Um, and then over on the far right of the screen, you've got safety systems. All right. Um, at the bottom, you've got your outdoor temperature. You've got your gear selector. Uh, it'll tell you what... Um, drive mode you're in, and then, of course, your odometer. Now, there isn't uh, a whole lot to customize on the screen. So I'll show you what there is. And if you go in here, you've got this controller here, and I'm just going to rotate. And we're going to start with the phone. So I do not currently have a phone hooked up, but if I did, this is where all your phone information would show up. All right, we're going to scroll down. Uh, this is FM radio. Now, once in any any media, you can use this for a volume up or down. You can use this to go to the next station, okay, or back. We'll scroll down. Then you have, of course, your AM. Any USB connection you would have. Any Bluetooth connection for media from your phone. Um, you have a smartphone connection there. And then you have a customized display. Now, the customized display, uh, in here, you can choose to hide or show these features that we just went through. So if you didn't want to see smartphone, you could click there and uncheck it, and it would not show up as an option. Okay, um, We're going to scroll down, go down again, and we'll go to back. Now, the other option you have is to, to display content, but there's only two choices. You can choose to display audio and clock, so you have both. Um, or, if I go here, and we go back to customize display, back to display content, um, you can choose to have this area of the screen off. So if, if I select off, and I go to say AM radio, nothing shows, okay? So it, it's a way to have sort of a calm screen. So I'm just going to go up back up here to customize display. I'm going to go back to display content and I'm going to click, I want audio and clock. So basically you can either have things display or not on this side of the screen. Okay. So that, that is it uh, that you can show or change on the screen. It's interesting. Once you, uh, once you set the cruise control, both the, the, the percentage of power being used and the, speedom, the uh, graphic speedometer on the right, they both disappear off to the sides. And you still get your digital speed, of course, in the middle, but it widens the screen a little bit while you're uh, in cruise control. The minute you turn cruise control, uh, cancel or turn off, those gauges pop back in. All right, so to control the cruise control and stuff, I'll just show you real quick. But that is on the right-hand side of the steering wheel. Okay, so basically you have your on off for cruise control and you'll see a little emblem in your uh, little icon in your gauge cluster. That's your cancel to set is down, resume is up, and then you can, you know, adjust it plus or minus. So, and then this one is your lane keeping assist right here. And then this is your uh, gap setting for your adaptive cruise. Now, in addition to that, if I just put my blinker on, I like cool little things. But it shows the, the car on the screen also has this blinker on. If I put my brakes on, it shows it there. So that's just really neat. All right. Next, we're going to move over to the infotainment screen. 
All right, so the infotainment screen is a 12.3 inch screen. So this comes on the sport and up uh, trim levels. Basically, you know, the buttons you see up here in the screen are all are all capacitive touch. They, you just, you know, they're built into the screen. You do have a physical power on just by pushing uh, and then a rotary volume control right here. But that is the only physical button. Now, um, this is, uh, we're on, uh, here we go, we're on the home screen here, and you're gonna have apps just like your phone, okay? And you've got basically three screens worth of apps that you can go into, and we'll get into those. Hey, and then you have this side window right here. So in the side window, uh, if I go up, I've got four icons. So I get uh, power flow, I get a clock, I get a compass, and then I can have media. Now this does have AM and FM uh, radio, which is interesting because Honda continues to include AM radio on there, which I think is good. You have got, of course, a wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto. You got a, uh, a Wi-Fi hotspot and of course, Bluetooth. So, and then on the far left, you've got shortcuts. Now, home and back stay on there no matter what, but you can customize the bottom ones. And to customize that or the screen here, we just, we're gonna click and hold, okay? If this is your car, you wanna click don't show again on that, but it, it's nice to include it. So for instance, this is the way it's currently arranged. But what I wanna do is I want to put, um, I'm gonna take the USB and I wanna hide it because I'm not going to use that. Uh, I'm going to take um, profiles and I'm gonna move them over to the front screen, okay? So that's how you're gonna customize that, right? Now, if I edit shortcuts, these are the shortcuts, okay? Uh, if I take and click on, let's say, um, Alexa, I can go there and just switch it, okay? Maybe you want your profile settings over here switch that so you've got two screens of things that you can drag over and customize all right so the real quick that's just how to customize your screen so that way you can set it up for the way that you want it okay so we'll start by just kind of going through uh, these icons and showing you what's in there so next we're gonna go into phone now if you want to see how to pair your phone then you're gonna to wanna to click on the link above and, and that will we'll have a video that shows you how to do that. So uh, on phone here, I've already set this up to Apple CarPlay. So when you press the phone icon, it takes you right to Apple CarPlay, but it puts you in the phone screen. So you got your favorites, your reasons, contacts, you got a keypad, you got voicemail. Okay, it'll throw up a little red dot there if you've got a voicemail as well. Um, phone tends to seem to always stay there, but these two can change depending on what you've used most recently. Um, it's got, it looks really good on this particular screen here. Um, if I go here, I can see apps just like I do on my phone. And if I go here, I get a split view. And this is the same for um, Android Auto. Um, Android has recently updated and you now, didn't used to get this uh, split screen, but you do. Okay. Now, all of these apps here um, are whatever will work with the system from your phone. Uh, so basically, you're gonna have any kind of navigation, any kind of audio, okay, and any kind of media, and all those will work, all right? Uh, in this split screen, you can click on either one of these and they will go to full screen, and then you can control it from there. You can also control it through Siri. So if I press and hold the voice command button, Siri, open Google Maps. And there you go, because this vehicle doesn't come with built-in navigation, but you know you don't really need it when you've got Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, especially in that beautiful screen. All right, so to get back to uh, anything um, inside the Honda system, you're just gonna click the Honda button. Okay, so next we're gonna go into FM radio here. And the most common questions we get are, you know, how do I change stations? How do I save a favorite? And how do I adjust the audio? So, first of all, you can tune right here. Okay, you can scan. Okay, and that'll look at what stations are available. You can go here to a tuning and you can actually physically tune to a particular button. All right, so that's how you tune. 
To save a favorite, you're just going to click and hold either over an existing favorite or on a new one. And there you go. You can also take a look at a station list if you want. All right, so if I go up to the menu button up here, now I'm going to get a couple of settings for this particular screen. So sound settings, here we go. So you can adjust your treble, mid-range, and bass, and these are a click-drag, but they do stop at the middle, and then you got to click them again and drag them. Or you can use the buttons. Get your balance and fader right there. This it can be a click-drag, or you can use the buttons. Uh, speed, volume, compensation. Uh, basically, it, the car tries to keep the volume sounding the same in your ear, whether you're going fast and there's a little more road noise, or you're going slow and there's less. All right, so you can adjust that here. Go back again. You do have RDS information, which is basically, you know, on a radio station, if it's as, if it's sending you out the, the name of the artist and song, it will scroll across your screen if that's turned on. All right, so that's uh, that's FM. If I click on FM, I do get the other uh, audio sources. So I'm going to go over to AM. So it's set up the same way. I mean, it looks exactly the same. Buttons are in the same position. So I like it that they do it so that the, the, the we call it the skin uh, of the display looks the same. All right. Um, I don't have Bluetooth audio hooked up because when I hooked up my phone, I chose to use Apple CarPlay. So... I'm going to click on Apple CarPlay, and it's going to take me right to my media. But let's say I wanted to do, say, Pandora instead. Right? Well, there we go. Right from there. So I'm going to hit back. I'm going to hit, I'm going to hit home there. All right. And so, you know, that's how we got to Apple CarPlay. All right. Um, you can also listen to music from Alexa. You do need to go through and set it up. And um, I'm not going to do that right now with my phone. So... Um, I cannot use the voice command system until I get that set up. So that would be something you'd want to do, uh, you know, if you purchase the car. All right. Um, if I click on Bluetooth audio, it's going gonna, it's gonna to change my phone from Apple CarPlay to Bluetooth, which I don't want. So I'm going to leave that there. All right. That's media. So let's go over here and let's look at profiles quickly. If you want to add a profile... You're going to change it. You're going to change or add it right here, and you can manage existing ones here. So, what do profiles do? Well, basically, they're going to be, they're going to set a few things for you. So, for instance, they you know typically they'll set your driver's seat. Um, they will set all of your favorites in your radio, so that every person who gets in the car, if they you click on a different profile, it brings up a different list of those things. That's customized to you. All right, and that's where you start doing that. Powerful. This is a nice meter. Um, over here, you get your uh, range, and then over here, you get your average fuel economy. And then, of course, you get a graphic display of whether the battery's charging or uh, delivering power to the, the, the wheels. All right. Um, let's go back here. You do have a trip A and trip B computer as well as a current drive. Right. If you click on the menu button, you know, so it keeps reappearing on the top of these. Okay, now I can reset trip A or trip B or delete the trip history. And for resetting, you usually get uh, a couple of choices. So you can manually reset, okay, and you can reset every drive. So every time you get in the car and start it, it's reset, or when it's fully refueled. So those are your choices there, and it'll be the same, of course, for, for B. To manually delete, if you're in manually, this is the this is the uh, the trip, and then you select your trip you want to delete, and click on it, and it deletes it. Okay, let's go back again. Uh, this is to set up Amazon Alexa, so you'd have to go through those steps to do that. But then you can use Alexa to do anything you use Alexa for in your house. And if you have never used Alexa before, well, it's like a digital personal assistant. You can do things such as program a navigation route. You can um, turn the lights on and off in your smart home. You can set the temperature of your thermostat at your car, uh, at your house. Um, lots of things you can do. And then as well as you can use voice command in the car for various functions. All right. So um, 
let's take a look at system updates here. And so the way this is going to work is, you know, you're going to, it'll notify if you get updates, right? But it's not going to update it while you're driving. It's going to wait till the car's off uh, and parked and connected to, um, you know, a Wi-Fi at your home or whatever. And then it's going to update, okay? But they don't update while you're driving. They'll download the information, but they don't actually update. Okay, you do have a Wi-Fi hotspot that you can set up. That's through AT&T, and that is going to be a monthly bill. Okay, under clock, okay, you get this nice clock, but you can change it. So you can change date and time if you want right here. Okay, or you can change the face of the clock. So right now you got a digital if you want, or you can have this picture, and you can add more. You'd have to have a USB connected, and then you have to look at your own information manual, but there's a way to add more. All right, let's go back here for a minute. Typically for date and time, you can just usually just click, and then it brings you to that screen, and then you go from menu, okay? All right, I want to show you a cool feature here. On the side window, I can take any one of these and flick it into this window so and then the clock comes back here I want media do the same thing the compass can do that so I, that's just a, it's you know it's a it's it's just a cool feature it's nice to be able to flick things uh, from one screen to the other okay and of course you can download the Honda link app and you can um, control and control various functions on the car. Um, but I should say it's kind of nice that the key fob actually comes with a built-in remote control start. So you don't have to use your phone. Um, you can look at vehicle notifications. You can contact Honda or you can connect. All right. Let's, um, I think we've got one more screen here I want. Okay. This just brings you to the compass here. There's nothing you can change on that. You can do the display mode here, so you can make it brighter or darker. Um, and then all apps. Hey, you can decide of all the things that show up on your infotainment screen as an icon, which do you want and which don't you want. So if you don't ever want to see a trip computer icon, take it off. Hey, this is where you make those selections, and it's it's all of these right here. So let's just look at this. And the, the nice thing is they let you, of course, select everything if you want. All right, I'm going to go back to home for a minute. All right, so let's go back one screen and let's talk about vehicle settings. Here you have your tire pressure monitoring system calibration. So if you sense that the tire pressure system is off, you can calibrate it right there. Your different uh, meters. So, what do you want? What units do you want? So, outside temperature display, you can change that. You know, it shows up on the dashboard. You can change it to minus five from what it's actually reading, all the way to plus five, if you want to do that. You can adjust the trip A and trip B, which we've already seen. You can adjust the alarm volume. You can turn the fuel efficiency backlight on, and when you're driving, it shows up in in uh, like a green. Uh, right at the very top of the driver's information screen. If you don't like that, you can turn that off right here. Turn that off. And there you go. Turn it on is just a simple click. Uh, rear seat reminder, you can have that on or off. And then your speed or distance units here, you can change to kilometers if you want. All right, um, all these work pretty much the same. I'm going to go uh, for a minute into individual settings. All right, this is where you set the individual drive mode. And that drive mode is contained, you know, that button's down in the center column. But you can change the powertrain, steering, uh, adaptive cruise, and the gauge. So if I click on powertrain, I can switch it to, uh, I want, do I want, have, want that in econ mode or normal mode or sport mode? All right, if I go into steering, I get normal or sport for steering. Adaptive cruise control, I can have it normal or um, I set it on econ for better fuel economy. And then on the gauges, I can set them to be normal or sport. So we'll leave them on sport there. 
And that's how you set that. So about the only thing that really changes under sport mode on the gauges is that you get a deacceleration gauge on the left, uh, and then it puts you into manual shifting. All right, let's go back here. All right, so that was under vehicle settings. Under general settings, uh, we've already seen display, um, we've already seen sound, but sound volume, we haven't. So this is kind of all the things that beep and trip at you at the car, in the car. So you can just change those right here. I don't believe, the, oh, yep, you can drag them, I guess, as well. So you can change system sounds, voice recognition, navigation, guidance, and phone calls all from this screen. So you can adjust those particular volumes separately. All right. Uh, you can take a look at all your connections if you want, manage those. And then under system, here I can change the language. Right? And it's, I think it's interesting that they have it separate for center display and instrument cluster. That is truly, that's very interesting. Okay, touch panel sensitivity. And then if something goes completely wrong, you can go in here and do a factory, do a factory data reset. All right, let's swipe over because we've got a few more things. Under camera, you've got the rear wide camera. Okay, you can you can have both kinds of guidelines on, fixed and dynamic. Or you can select which ones you want on and which ones you want off. All right, go back. Cross traffic monitor. I'm going to turn that on. All right, voice control. Here is where you can say, listen for, hey Siri, and it comes on. Whoop, there we go. So even uh, earlier I did it with the voice command button, but you wouldn't have to use that. It'll just wake up automatically there. And the default assist app, you can have none or Alexa. So if you choose not to have Alexa, you, you, your voice command for the vehicle is, is not going to work. You can still do, hey Siri, but... That's not going to control anything in the vehicle. That's just for your phone. All right. Um, under security, you can choose a lock type, and you can type in some uh, a code on your screen to lock certain features. Okay. And then under advanced settings here, um, you have, well, I won't get into all this, but you can look at um, accounts. Okay. You can look at different users, the profiles that are set up. Apps and notifications, network, and um, internet. So that's all under there. So I'm going to go back again. We're going to go over here. So I'm going to put the car in reverse, and let's talk about the cameras. So here we go. I don't know if you can hear that, but it's giving off a little bit of a, like a train in the distance sound, really far distance sound. Um, and this particular vehicle does not have the 360. Uh, if you did, that would then the 360 part would show up, uh, a bird's eye view would show up over here. All right, so you've got um, sort of a um, more wide view. You've got a little more straight on narrow view, and you've got pretty much right down at your hitch. Okay, this is where you can turn off um, the parking sensors in the rear. So if you're trying to hook up a trailer or something, they're not beeping at you all the time. Then you can adjust the... Um, display there and then just click up here to get it back but those are a really nice angle well that's it on the driver's information and infotainment screens on the 2023 honda accord and again this is the sport hybrid trim level hope this has been helpful thanks for watching